modaliyadagi avaru madakke na munche let's start by lighting the lamp put your hands together and welcome on stage modaliya namma ivatina karyakramada guest mr imtiaz ali khan sir can we have you on stage please request dr varun murthy sir on stage and also the host of today's event Vio Technologies founder Mr. Vinay Ramesh can we have you on stage I'd also like to request Qza founder Satish Gaukar on stage please Deepa Belgo Moolaka Karikrama ke ondu valle chalne anna kodbeku requesting all the dignitaries to come forward step forward light the lamp can we increase the volume come on everybody let's all uh, stand up for this auspicious moment may the light brighten each one of our lives may god shower all his blessings on each one of us ee jyoti nammellara baalalli neeru namma baalina belaku nimma baalalli innashtu belaku harili katlu doora agli anta deepa belaguva moolaka guru bhyo namaha ee ondu event ge nimellarigu preethi illa swagatha idivi hello emi at iisc bangalore director at directorate of human space the legend himself is sitting on stage aur yen maatartare antu kelodike nee ready idre nimma chappaaye mukantra vedike mele swaragi see the very inspiring intias ali khan sir few words good evening everyone uh, at the outset let me say that uh, it is really an honor and privilege to be here and i thank uh, mr vinay to for inviting me i thank all the organizers for this uh, opportunity given to me Uh, honestly, I really feel humble standing in front of you because uh, it is the teachers whom we all looked up to uh, throughout uh, our education uh, in school and college and later on in the institute. And there are some teachers I think everyone uh, sort of remembers them throughout their life, and they can impact and they sort of shape your life. So I, I would take this opportunity to remember some of my teachers uh, whom I remember from. I was in the Institute of Science. There was Professor Gandhi, who was still there in the department, and then from the Ahmedabad Sabar College of Engineering, where I did my graduation from, Professor Anand Ram and Dr. M. B. Ramani. So some of those people who really impacted my lives. But today, uh, when I asked Mr. Vinay as to what I should be speaking about, he said that I think mostly it is academic institutions, and what uh, this platform. in itself is a very unique platform i think thank you for evolving this kind of platform because uh, this is uh, the effort that you're putting in it's a very noble cause and i'll be really happy if in some way you know we could help this cause so what he told me was that we must try and uh, transact here as to what options uh, students have today especially in the field of research and development and innovation so uh, what i do is i just speak briefly about uh, isro overall what we are doing and a little bit about human space uh, program and then perhaps you know uh, what opportunities students have in the country in terms of uh, research and innovation i also have uh, an external perspective because during my career i've had the opportunity to serve at the indian embassy in paris i served as counselor space and i had this opportunity to represent the country at uh, United Nations Committee for Peace and Defense Outer Space so i know how the education system works there so probably some of those elements can also be brought in so i'll start with isro isro as you are all aware i think when you think of isro what comes to mind is basically the rockets launch vehicles and satellites that we build and launch but uh, the vision for isro uh, which was sort of defined very clearly by our founding father Uh, Vikram Sarabhai was to uh, you know harness the space technology for the good of society. So we were very clear right from beginning that we are not here to compete uh, with the advanced space faring nations, but we are here to use space technology for the benefit of man and society. And if you see over the last six decades of journey that we have had, we have tried to do this uh, in terms of Earth observation. so we try to collect data from space based platforms which helps in town planning in water management in disaster management then we uh, develop communication tools so if you see how uh, the you know the dth has come up the broadbands have come up 
Then we have focused on navigation of late. We have built our own uh, regional navigation satellite system. And then there have been some uh, very key milestone exploration missions like uh, the Chandrayaan 1, Chandrayaan 2, the Mangalyaan mission. And uh, having developed all these technologies and having proven ourselves you know, in the domain of uh, uh, science and technology, I think we had a good case to put up to the government uh, for a human spaceflight program. Because as you may be aware, uh, countries like US and Russia had already done this uh, in 1960s and 70s. So uh, the question that comes naturally to mind is why now? Like why are we venturing into human space flight now? But there's also a renewed interest across the world in human space flight. Now it's not just the agencies, but the industries are also getting into uh, human space flight. Industries like SpaceX, like uh, Boeing, like Lockheed Martin, like Virgin Galactic. They are all uh, you know, looking at, because technology, technology has changed now, we are talking about 3D printing, so it's possible to construct some sort of habitats on you know, these kind of planetary bodies with the regolith that is available there. But also people are talking about space tourism, about uh, resources exploration from asteroids, from moon or Mars. And these things are not in the realm of fiction or imagination anymore. There are clear cut sort of, you know, uh, implementable plans with these industries and they have got business models around them. So it, it was in the year 2018 that uh, Honorable Prime Minister announced our uh, Human Space Flight Program Gaganyan uh, on the Independence Day. And then we had uh, sort of, you know, the clear mandate for demonstrating in stages. Like the, the first step would be to demonstrate human space flight capability to go out orbit and bring back uh, the human beings safely to Earth for which we have uncooled flights and then we move over to the uh, cool flight. In terms of the approach, it changes a lot, like we, it's not just about engineering anymore, but if you look at sustained human space flight program, we look at science, we look at medicine, an important aspect would be how microgravity or the space environment impacts the human body. And there are many, many questions are there for us to understand how diseases happen, how uh, immunity develops. So, uh, just to cut it short, microgravity impacts almost every part of human body. You, you must have read about uh, bones getting weaker, the spine getting taller, muscles getting weaker, but it impacts heart because there is, you know, what happens in microgravity is we are born on Earth, so our body has adapted ourselves to Earth-like conditions. But as you go to microgravity, blood starts flowing upwards. It starts accumulating around the heart. So the heart starts uh, growing smaller in size. But the good thing is that these changes, whatever happen in space, are not permanent changes. There is no data to show that uh, you know, whatever astronauts have gone to space and come back or even to moon and come back. There has not been any permanent uh, or irreversible damage to the body. People have come back, there has been rehabilitation and then they have got back to their original self. So this uh, opens up a lot of new horizons uh, for not just the Department of Space or ISRO, but for the entire scientific community. So now we are looking at space biology, space medicine, space biotechnology, astrobiology. So these are the new domains that are growing. And for the next generation to come and take up research, I think there are uh, plenty of options for them. But uh, today's discussion, I think we are not limiting ourselves to ISRO alone. If you look at a wider uh, sort of perspective, the way the country is growing uh, in terms of uh, our economy, the size of economy, uh, the way we are growing, I think uh, we have a lot of research options. Uh, we are ranked maybe in the top 20-25 uh, countries in the world, but we need to go, go to the top 5, top 3 countries in the world in terms of research and innovation. So, there are CSI labs, uh, you know, empty number of labs, and 40 labs and 40 capacity building institutions. So there are almost 1000 uh, sort of uh, GRF, uh, SRF kind of vacancies you have. Then there are DRDO, there is the Department of Atomic Energy. Under MHA you have so many institutions which have vacancies. So I think this is something that uh, as the head of the institutions, as, as principals, uh, this, need, this feedback needs to go back to the students. Uh, I think there are some students in this audience as well. So one needs to understand that we need not always take the beaten path because uh, we just there's just not just IIT and these MNCs to look for, but there's a lot we can give back to the country. 
after you know having grown up here and after having this education. So I think this is something that I would like to transact into this community. Thank you.